Well, we made it into August and I keep getting questions about what recovery gear do I normally have in the Jeep? Um, and then what is an X-Lock? So that was used in the video yesterday. So I figured we would show you that today. But first, since everybody keeps asking what recovery gear do I keep in the Jeep? Well, I'm getting ready to redo the back of this because as much as I love having the fridge in here, sitting sideways, it takes up the entire trunk. I can turn this vertical, but the slide that I had for it, it doesn't, you can't shut the door. Uh, the fridge doesn't fit in there. So um, it's kind of a little bit of disarray uh, with the fridge in here while I try and figure out what I'm gonna do. But we got a high lift jack mounted up high. We've got the first aid kit with all kinds of awesome stuff in there. If you have not ever checked out Outer Limit Supply, you need to check them out. Um, we've just got some roll-up hand wrenches that just float around right here. And my four-tire air-up system, which is just a couple of hoses and the, uh, the Hurricane little four-tire air-up. And then my air hose coming off the ARB, which is right there. Always got a fire extinguisher. It's not a very big one, but anything helps. And let's see, let's come around. Usually a couple spare straps. Uh, this yellow one's a sacrificial strap. It's a light duty strap. You need to know your strap ratings. And then I've got a really heavy duty strap. I think that's a, oh, uh, what do we got? 30 footer from factor 55 and 11,000 pounds, yeah. 24,250, that's what it is. 11,000 kilo, I think, is what they rate that. So there's always a couple straps in there. Tire patch kit. I've never used it, uh, so it's still in the cellophane. And a little handsaw. Uh, I don't always carry a chainsaw. Uh, it just takes up too much room. So I've got a little handsaw in case I need to do some limbing of trees. Emergency water. Um, I cycle that out every six to eight weeks. Uh, just so there's always at least two quarts in here and then the 72 hour bag so Everything I need for 72 hours. There's two liters of water on each side I'm not going to take everything out of here because it's a real chore to get uh, I gotta take a patch off of here so I don't get <laughs> It has a nasty saying on it so 72 hour bag um, Literally everything you need for 72 hours um, I mean, there's, there's gloves, there's paracord, there's snacks, um, riding utensils, rain gear, um, what else we got? Um, Gatorades, you never know if you need electrolytes. So this is all stuff that's required for the team, for the off-road recovery team, to be self-sufficient in the field. I mean, everything. I got clothing, duct tape, food, um this little bottle so I don't have to get my water bottle sticky if I mixed up Gatorade, um, space blankets, wool socks, uh, literally anything you can think of. I've, I've got, there's my two liter uh, water bottles and uh, I've got some toiletries and stuff in there if I ended up in a hotel or someone's house for the night. Um, oh, headlamp, because you know, every once in a while you end, out, end up in the dark and uh, it gets pretty bright. Front seats. I was going through the trees to get up here a little bit. Always gotta have a mag light. Holy cow. <laughs> the trees on this trail <clears throat> are a little thin, a little narrow. So, ham radio, the actual radio bodies in the back. Gotta have maps, that's Gaia GPS. Uh, app for the tablet. Um, usually got a handheld for missions because when you're out of the vehicle, you need to be able to uh, talk on a handheld. And uh, yeah, let's go around the other side. That's just my camera box for today. So, usually have more water in here. These are just some that were in here from yesterday, but I've usually got another four quarts in here. So between the four quarts here, the two quarts behind my driver's seat, 
and then the four quarts in the in the bag um yeah i'm pretty much set on water um emergency uh, spot beacon and let's see that's it for the front seats the back seat a um, little bit of disarray since this is just a fun trip but the actual recovery gear bag which is going to go back in the back seat uh, when i get all this ironed out and then the uh, transit clusters i just didn't put them back in the bag after that op from yesterday but let's see there's always more stuff floating around um chair for camping uh small little tool bag that's just got miscellaneous like old sockets and stuff in it that um, comes in quite handy bubble rope got to have a kinetic rope um, that comes in extremely handy for certain situations where you don't need the winch or if you need to winch with the bubble rope because the bubble rope will store the energy from your winch and help you either get a vehicle uh, flopped back on its wheels or help you laying it down so um, let me drag this bag out and we'll go through this bag because I think that's what people want to see and then we'll rig up the x-lock okay okay so we've got our two transit clusters no i'm going to turn around so my shadow's not blocking the video we have the x lock everybody wants to know how that works so we'll hook that up to the jeep here in a minute so x lock just sits in there and then i've always got electrical tape that comes in handy for splicing uh more winch rope eyes Gotta have some valve cores. The reason why there's two missing is because I've damaged two of mine on the Jeep and I've had to replace them on the trail. Colby valves, those are extremely handy. If you rip a valve stem out, you can thread those in and get on your way. And then I've got actual like push in regular tire stem valve stems. So that's what floats around in that part of the bag. Put all this back in here and we'll get into the big compartment. Okay. It's not anything terribly crazy. Off-road recovery is a team effort and everybody's always got more stuff. So in the Jeep, I carry two soft shackles and there's actually four on the Jeep, two on the front bumper, two on the back. The rest of my winch line off of that, which I cut down, on purpose a hundred foot winch extension and one pulley block not a snatch block that's an actual well okay they call it a snatch block that is a pulley block there are actually snatch blocks that exist tree strap which you saw me use this on the video from gordon gulch um, this one is rated it's a tree strap slash recovery strap, um, 26,500. So we did not put near that in it yesterday, but that's a nine foot strap. Um, hitch uh, receiver block comes in very handy. The factor 55 fid for splicing your synthetic ropes, which is how I put that uh, closed hook on. And then I've got some leather gloves and some winter gloves, just a little bit like a liner cold weather glove with some nice grip on them. So let's see, is there anything else in there? Nope, nothing in the pockets. So that's really it. Um, it's not a crazy amount of gear. Now I have a second bag at the, at the house, identical to this, that has two more of the pulley blocks in it and uh, two sections of chain, which you saw on the caribou um, subaru recovery so i've got um two chains for when things really get bad and two more of these just in case i almost got the hiccups there goodness so this is not all my gear because i actually have more uh, in the power wagon each vehicle has just what it needs to recover itself and help someone else out too so let me put all this back away and then we will play with that guy because I think everybody wants to see that. Alrighty, so let's imagine for a minute that the Jeep is stuck. 
I have framed it out in mud or snow, something to the effect to where it can't go. So on this winch, I have about 50 some feet of winch rope. And I did that on purpose because most of the time in self recovery, um, you only need to pull yourself the uh, length of the Jeep to get out. So on a drum, this is a 10,000 pound winch. And when you have every single wrap on the drum, it's about a 10% loss. There's a, there's, there's a formula to it, but for the sake of easier math, we're just gonna say it's a thousand pounds of lost torque off of what this is rated for every time there's a wrap on the drum. So let's imagine that the only recovery point that I have is right there. I can't go, you know, 60 more feet down into the trees. So from pulling from here to here, I'm on what looks to be the second wrap of the drum. So we're just gonna call that a 20% loss in winch reduction or in, in winch uh, pulling power. So now my 10,000 pound winch, we're just gonna say can only pull 8,000 pounds. Well, this vehicle at, let's say it was at full capacity, 5,000 pounds sitting on the frame is going to be a 10,000 pound pull. So I can either get out a pulley block and two to one it, or I can pull all the rest of this out Now on these, a lot of people stop at the red and there's too much red on here. You can go to the halfway point on the drum and that's perfectly safe. The line's not gonna come flying off of there. So now on this last wrap, or I should say first wrap, we have 10,000 pounds of pulling force rated right there. And I've actually got a piece of tape marking the halfway point on this so I don't pull out too far on the winch line. So now I've got all this extra slack laying here on the ground. So what do we do? Well, we take a shackle. We need something to not exceed the minimum bend radius of our synthetic rope. And this pin is basically it. So let's come up here. Whoops, I forgot the uh, star of the show. So let's come up here and we are going to rig this up. Make sure that you can still see that. I know the sun is at my back, but it is what it is. So now we have our minimum bend radius on the shackle pin and we have three, liar, three lines of rope laying here. So it took me a minute to figure this out because uh, it, was, it was just confusing. So your line that goes back to your winch comes up and over just like this. Now the rest of your line that goes up to your anchor point comes through the hole Oh, I've got this too far. There we go. So, comes up through the hole and then back around. I'm getting bitten by horse flies. And then you can work it back and just work that slack back and get those lines to lay down. So now, if you flip that over, you've got one line going back to the winch, three lines going to your anchor point. The reason why this works is because this is static. These don't ever move. So if I go back and tension this up, let me get my brake set so I'm not pulling against the parking pole. There we go. Now there's a decent load on that. So I'm gonna be a little careful around the line, but I've also got it, uh, I inspect it on a regular basis. So what we've got here, let me get you off the harness, is 
This X lock rated at I think 26,000. It's underneath the lines here. Yep. We have our minimum bend radius being maintained right here, going back to the Jeep. And then we've got our three static lines that don't move going up to our anchor point all the way down here. Minimum bend radius here. And then our, our anchor going to these trees. So even though I've only got, eh, let's call it 30 feet to work with, I pulled out all 50, 55 feet of my line so I could get down to the last wrap on the drum. There's more than one use for this. This is one of the more, co more common ones that we use it for, is to shorten a winch line or shorten an extension if you need an extension. So extremely handy tool to have in the gear bag. So anyway, that was all I had for you. Everybody was kind of wondering what was in the bag and how that X-Lock works. I'll put links to some of this stuff, um, the X-Lock especially. But yeah, if you have any questions, um, let me know. I'm gonna tear all this down and have some lunch. Thanks for watching.